Welcome to another episode of the Bandwagon Podcast and today is a special episode, one of the first ones in live production and I've got a guest of mine who I've been after for quite a while. So when I originally set up the podcast, I made a list and I've said this a few times, but I think this guy was like number three, um, very influential on a, on a lot of levels, a lot of layers to this guy, um, specialist in the Bangla industry. Um, Focusing now in, in more sort of faith and as a philanthropist really as well in a lot of other projects. Also releasing his, his music and generally um, a top, top, top lad. But I still will be giving him a, a huge grilling because he owes me a lot of favours. So without further ado, welcome to Kaka Singh Thank you. Wow, what an intro. Is that the, possibly the nicest well. thing I've ever said to you? I've never heard an intro like that. What do you mean? Like, are you starstruck from it? Yeah. Or is it... That profile, but I thought people were all sitting there like, yeah, man. Hold <laughs> on, <laughs> No, but I also forgot now you're a, a successful podcaster as well, so you're in so yes. many different uh, yes. uh, arenas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got to express yourself, innit? You've got to express yourself. That's all it's about. But you've been on a, a lot of the on the on the circuits. You've you've taken some time off on social media, which we'll get to at some stage. Yes. Sorry. But how did you, oh, obviously, he's got two phones, and you know why everyone needs two phones nowadays? No, I've only got one phone. Okay, okay. okay. So, you've been away from the limelight for for quite a while. Um, how has this sort of recent experience been over the last sort of three months? So, it's been good, it's been good. Um, when you say recent experience, do you mean of not being on social media for five years? Yeah, because we, we live in a sort of a, a, a false world, so to speak, where if you're not on social media, you don't really kind of exist out of sight, out of mind. Mm -hmm. And you've you consciously made a decision to come off social media, mm -hmm. but then to come back on it and seeing that full kind of volume of react, of that social media world coming in with all messages and tags and, um, you know, who, who, who you've worked with before. And then now you're releasing something and you need mm -hmm. that support. Um, how's that experience been? Um, very good question actually, but um, it's been flipping tiring, but I'm using it as work. Like I go on it, this, this is my job. My job is the postman, right? So the postman. We're going to come on to that. My job is I'm a postman now. I've changed my job recently. And um, basically because I'm doing that work, I need to be on this platform to post the messages, mm. which I'm posting <clears throat> through my music. So. Um, before, when I was off it for five years, I was in a different place. I wasn't a postman. Mm. Yeah, I hadn't got my job as a postman then. So now that I've got my new job, it's all work and it's all mission, go, go, go. Posting, posting, posting messages into the universe, into the world, into people. That obviously takes a lot of bit of a, an, uh, an emotional fatigue on somebody. Um, I always find it uh, to a point when I'm posting stuff on social media that I, I kind of resent it. I don't really necessarily want to do it. If you had kind of like a five-year detox and doing it, it's got to have at least a little bit of fatigue on you to where you would have been dedicating that time to either family time or or going into your faith or looking at praying time or whatever it would have been that you would have been doing mm, something more productive. It did release, yeah, it did release. So I think it's 2019, I just went, right, I'm a, it's not good. I you know, for if you're meditating and doing stuff like that, which I was doing then quite intensely. And I was just like, this thing is taking a lot of time, especially with that, um, especially with that uh, screen time. Yeah. You can look at yeah, the privacy you're settings on your, on your yeah, so because you're looking on your phone so much, so much. And I worked out the hours I'm doing on this. What the hell? And it's like crazy hours you know, that you're putting into Instagram and just watching what you're just consuming all this data. Freaking, what the hell is just going in, in. So that was what it was, and at the time I was like, right, done. And also, like, I didn't want any of the work I was doing. I don't want to, because you couldn't, um, you couldn't like kind of before that you couldn't kind of measure how much you're using social media before that screen time, innit? Yeah, the but, privacy yeah, setting. Yeah, yeah. When yeah, you yeah. see the figure, then it's like, okay, need to do something. What, about what, it. what was the figures? What were you looking at? It wasn't that much. I mean, I went on it that much, but seven hours plus. 
No, I can't remember now, but it was... Or I, or I, yeah, at, that time, at that time I was on it, I used to post a lot. Spiritual yeah. stuff. Huh. I used to post a lot of spiritual stuff, and it was good. Like on Time Save Our page, we ran that, you know, through Child Serbs, other release, and times like that. He was on it intensely, even for the Time Save Our page mainly, because we used to create a lot of content. We used to sit there making it on the apps, you know, designs and stuff of all these. You remember the yeah, yeah. artworks we used to do? Yeah. So, yeah, but that used to take a lot of time, but even on Time Save Our, I then calmed down because I didn't have, I deleted the apps on my phone. <coughs> well, going back to your question, how does it feel now using it again? I've got a different purpose for what I'm using it now. So you don't let. I think there's a there's a lesson in terms of what people have been saying with how um, the app doesn't necessarily own you own you now. You own the app because you have got the responsibility of how you're using it more wisely. Yeah, and it's that program on Netflix. What's it called? The social social dilemma. Te- the social dilemma. Yeah. That when I saw that as well, I started to see. Okay, I understand now how Instagram. It's all about your attention, your focus. But then at the same time, believe it or not, I started seeing it in. Um, Gurbani, where Gurbani is telling me that your attention and your focus is the most um, supreme tool you've got. So on one side, the Guru's telling me, this is the most supreme tool, your attention and your focus. On the other side, even the social dilemma is now telling me, like, listen, the, all Instagram wants is your, is your focus and your attention. So I'm there thinking, wait a second, this Shabbat just said this, this is that. So put it together, all right, get off this. Mm. My Guru's telling me, get off it. So I'm off it now. And then for five years I was off it until now my guru's saying something else to me within. Mm. So you change it, you develop it as you learn. Uh, what was a young uh, Kaka like? I mean, especially your journey from where you were going into... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get to many different layers of Kaka that even I know and want to kind of show a more complete side, especially to understand where you're at, where you're at, at, this, at this moment. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty deep, yeah. This is good, man. You're good. You're good at this. But what it is, you see, if you got me here and here, you know, when I did the social media detox, mm. let's call that Kaka version one. Twenty twenty. No, he's about. There's been about fifteen versions, but he's probably <laughs> twenty twenty um, four. No, no, twenty twenty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Twenty twenty. Before COVID. <coughs> September twenty twenty three. Yeah. Yeah. September when I started writing music. That Kaka before that, right, is a total different story. Like what he was doing. Mm. So he had different reasons. The one from there onwards is a total different one. So the guy I'm going to tell you about is going to be the one who's here now. Yeah? I've, I've lost you. No, no. I got, I got you on that bit. I'm more interested at this stage in terms of... Do you want to go right back? Do you want to go to... Yeah, because I think what, what tends to happen is sometimes when you see, let's say, social media, and a lot of people be it, being introduced to you as a complete package as it is now, this version... But everybody knows that there's different routes to get yeah, to the to you know, that stages, right, right? Right, right? So you know where you're playing Tolki in Mundus, for example. Yeah. So the and then you only know that version. Yeah, and then how does that version get to uh, being in a band with Sukshinda Shinda, Omenhaya, and Jazzy B? What was that journey like to start off with? The journey is amazing. Like obviously, when you're looking back in life, it's, it's amazing whatever you're looking at. But the main thing is what's common throughout that journey. You know from playing in a Munda and getting up, building up, and then all of a sudden I remember meeting Jazzy B. Um, first, even Amman, when I met Amman, that was like mad. You know, like he was his presence. Mm-hmm. And then it led on. Because um, Amman was you know, obviously local, innit? So when you, when I, I'm probably one of the guys I would say in the world who in my raw eyes saw Amman here's talent, I'm probably one of the, at, that, at the period where before he went massive, who truly saw his talent. You know, people say he's sick and he's this and that. Like, I've seen that guy so close where I'm thinking, flipping how, yeah. how is he flicking playing that? How does he do this? And I, I know what his gonna, you know, his virtues. Yeah. And um, so that is amazing in itself. When you're talking about people talk about Amunir, everyone owns a bit of Amunir in the world. Mm, yeah. Every fan, every listener. But what I own of him in my mind, what I've seen and captured from him is phenomenal. Honestly, like magical. Mm. And then, yeah, so I'm drawing a story here. Yeah, yeah, no, good question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I mean, explain I want it to know. As best I want to know. I want to know. <coughs> so, Amun was next level, yeah. And then, what, one thing he did, he projected to me that he was humble. He was like, but Shindafadi is next level. And I had a met Shindafadi at these points. So, all I know is, really, in his car, he's just listening to Shindafadi. Shindafadi, sorry. He's just listening to him, listening to him, listening to him. And I'm in the back. 
like, wow, this is like mad. This, how good must this guy be? If I'm not saying this, you get me? So for me, it was like, he was like the promised land. Imagine if I meet him one day. <laughs> you know, I'm with Warwick, he's no, no, ago. no, but you say it that. It feels really far. No, no, it? because you say that, like, we used to go to Bibi Nanki Gordwara on, on a Sunday. Yeah. And Sukhshinda Shinda used to be, he used to go to the Gordwara. So I would just, I used to know when he used to go to, to have his longer, I used to time it so I could just see him. Like, that's yeah. how much, he was like a mythical yeah, character mythical, on the door. Like, yeah, because we, yeah. we had another guy. He decided to suck, suck who passed away last year. And um, he had a dog off from Sukhshinda Shinda. So we used to be like... Put that in auction. Yeah, bro. that, mate. Put that in some that, auction. That was one of the biggest things that I'll we used bid, to see. I'll bid on that, I'll tell you. I'll yeah, we used that. to see that. We're like, oh, can, can we play with it? Can we play? And, you know, because he was... <laughs> He's like the, he was he was like the best. And then when I first met you and he, you started playing the tall and I saw you play, I was like, "Yo, that guy's pretty sick, man." No, this I, I, I tell you one thing. There's one thing because I was with Aman, I was so heavily influenced. Yeah. Um, Aman instilled into me that style, you know, that Lal Chandpati style yeah, yeah, tall. Yeah. So there was Aman. Obviously, he's the yeah. part, he's the don for me, right? But then Aman saying, "This guy's the don." Go up, get there, right? So I'm like, my stud. He's, I, I said I'm on my start. We didn't sit and have formal lessons, but he did actually teach me a lot of times. Come on, I'll teach you this. He used to take me up into his bedroom. He used to play the door. No one does. He used to play the door, yeah. yeah. It's a family podcast. <laughs> too much detail, yeah, but I'm, we used to go in his room. Obviously, he'd be out of the yeah, other yeah, room, yeah. and he used to get out and play the door, right? He used to yeah. Oh shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's no, no, that's good. That is so. So I'm used to get it <laughs> out. And it. <laughs> okay. No, no. Go carry on. Carry on. Oh shit. Yeah. yeah. Carry on. He's gonna watch it. Yeah, yeah. He's alright. No, right. no, no. And then obviously he's just. <laughs> <laughs> he's gone. He's, he's gone. He's getting the ball out. No, no. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Fuck yeah, Ricky. It's all weird. Sit down, lad. But um, yeah, he used to um. Then once he's playing the door and he's like projecting onto Shinda, mm. you know, and I used to be like, bloody hell, imagine meeting that guy, innit? You know, the one who I've heard so much about in mm. tapes, I was studying Shinda body. Like, you're talking about like, I'd say Saturday mornings from nine in the morning till around about four o'clock, I just sat there with the door and I was just practicing to door beat door. Rare, all so day. Were you look, um, like, just in comparison as well, the, the, a lot of the lads in uh, Birmingham, because there used to be, Two schools used to be the door blasters with the no. good yeah. mile, or you'd have uh, door foundation with Johnny Kelsey. Mm. And but everyone was <laughs> always kind of like Shinda's the promised land because you'd have grassroots, yeah. and you're trying to play the the people trying to play the door on there, or you're yeah, finding yeah. like door beat door and learning all those <coughs> things. But you're closer to you, you you were more closer than a lot of the Midlands lads, really. Yeah, because of women. Mm. So because of, but Amon used to be teaching me like play this ten and that and that and that and that and I used to be there thinking, shit, practice, practice. And he used to be quite strict. Mm. He was a wicked teacher, he was strict, but he was a brother. He was a friend. It went like he was like, I'm going into him as an astar, and he's now saying, I'm your teacher. You're this. No, no, no. He was like, we used to obviously have sessions and all that mm-hmm. back in the day, and we used to have a laugh. He was really fun to be around him as well, but he was a proper big brother, not just to me, to all of our crew. He looked after, like, probably as he grew then. This is actually interesting because people don't know this kind of information. Um, but as he grew, Aman had, we probably had about 20 people used to go out together. And he was the main, like, the brother because he held it all together because the music's the power, isn't it? Yeah. And he was so talented and he had, he had confidence. And, um, and then that led on. And from there, Aman started becoming successful. We all helping. Remember, we used to drop off tapes in the shops. Everything, I'd done everything, poetry, you name it. Because for us, that was everything. I'm um, making it was everything for us, isn't it? And when the first uh, Cylinder Shindas one come out, uh, Deja, Deja Vu. Vu. Just before that, he had releases. And um, okay, it's they started it's coming good. out. I think KS Mukha come out afterwards. Mm. You're, you're, in that, you're in that video as well, by the way. <coughs> I'm in all of them. <laughs> I'm in all of Amon's old videos, yeah. And then basically... Um, Deja vu Potjitane when that come out. Mm. It was for us it was massive. And then Mitrani Big. Motarte was the one. <laughs> yeah, that's the one. Motarte, yes man. Yeah. People, people who don't know. Yeah. If they start comparing this current person on No stage, but it's important because I, Yeah, because I just want to show I just want to kinda of get it across of like how far you are in one way of life 
and then you get to a T junction and, and you still can do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm, I'm, I tell you what, Ricky, you got some skills going on here, bro. <laughs> this is like some film direction you're putting on here, man. Well, you know, it's I learned from you. It's you know good, what I mean? Yeah, there you go. Exactly. That's good, man. So you, you get to the point of where like Omen's getting to that bit. He's getting so now global Omen's fame be, now. Yeah, yeah. Then all of a sudden he went bank, and he worked hard for it. He's a very um, sensible person. You know, he had a lot of respect how he spoke to people. And he just went, through his qualities, just went bang. He went massive. Like, he really did go big. Mm. He was doing tapes for all these artists, like, you know, because Shindapaji equally, in parallel, went boom. Shindapaji was on another stratosphere. He'd gone, he'd left the planet at this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'd left the planet at this point. Jazzy and Shindapaji, what they were doing. But Aman was obviously very close to him. So for us, him going even anywhere was like massive, innit? But then international. Um, Tours started coming, trips, they, they, and they it mixed in. But then, then obviously, Aman led me on to Shindapali and Jazzy B, and that was the maddest thing. Even in now, it's some of the maddest experience I've ever had in my life. Without that question. When them now, when the next stage goes up. Yeah, because like when you when you see Jazzy and especially and Shinda when at that time. I remember oh. when they did Maharajas down on Saw Road. Yeah, and before they, this, I'm talking. Yeah, no, I'm just talking. Just, this is just the culmination bit where yeah, one, traffic two. is stopped. It's just going, <coughs> it's crazy. But you're in, the, you're in the background and seeing the lead up to that as well at the same time. Bro, I'll tell you, for me, he was the biggest. But I'm going to jump forward a bit. But uh, what happened was then, uh, it led me on to, I went to New York. I lived in New York for a year. Yeah. Right in, because um, I was messing about a lot. I used to smoke like weed and stuff and... Go come home really late, yeah, mm. mess about like that in my local area, my boys and that, and um, used to come home really late. And in college, and my mum and that were like, she, I think she found about reading my um, trousers one day, yeah. innit? She said, Aki, oh, this. I was like, oh, shit, you know what I mean? And uh, got clogged, that was it for her, she's thinking, because I was a bit crazy back in the day, yeah, I was a proper. There's a lot of stories around, yeah, Royal yeah. I'm, a mad, spot, I'm a mad guy, it? I'm a mad guy, yeah. like, yeah. um, I was very aggressive as well, and I had a lot of fights and. Basically, I'm a hard guy. That's why I hang around with hard people as well. But, um, Thanks. Yeah, and you'll probably see this on my stage as well. I was very aggressive the other day. I've got a lot of aggression in me, always have had. And that's never going to go... Not We're not talking about anger. We're talking about aggression. Like, you could call it bravery, courage. These kind of things I relate to a lot. And over the years, maybe this is why I kind of moved up. Mm. Some, cause sometimes, you know, for these sort of qualities... Because I used to protect the artists I was around, always. I used to feel a sense of protection around Oman, yeah. um, where I'm ready to do anything. Anyone touches this guy, we go to clubs, we're on tours, like dangerous places, and they'll all tire. Anyone, and um, then that quality in me grew as I'm going up the ladder in music. Then when I met Shindapadi, freaking anyone even touches this person. You know, not that I need to do this, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I'm not a security guard, yeah. but I'm just feeling it. Anyone ever even looks at him, I'm freaking taking him out on stage anywhere. I don't care. Obviously, when I'm around Jazzy B now, as I meet the the ultimate for me, he was. And um, I went to when I was in America for a year. Obviously, Oman was coming on tour, and they were in Queens. There's a park in Queens, Jamaica, and I'd been there studying for six, seven months on my own. I missed England. Studying what? IT. I was doing okay. Microsoft certification, yeah. MCSE, yeah. because my parents remember the weed. They yeah, yeah. The weed. Oh, yeah, they kicked you so out. They sent me to America, yeah, by yeah. the way. My mum and dad said, With his guns. you're going on holiday. Yeah, so you talked about aggression and all these things. No, not guns. And, and you're going stuff. to the America. Never yeah. got that bad, like, into guns. Like, but what happened is... Um, <laughs> not that bad. No, but then um, my mum and dad sent me there because like, this he's going off the rails. He's aggressive. Yeah. He's fighting. There's complaints, police. This and that can happen, yeah? Used to happen. And um, our crew in Leamington was also... We, they, you might laugh, we were called PPs. I don't know if you ever heard of back yes. in the day. Yeah, some people laugh. What's PPs mean? I don't want to say because <laughs> we were young kids, we called the Punjab Punishers, innit? And the boys who were with me, they went to jails, they did time. They, I grew up around these, like Lempton, Owen Melinda's here, he knows. Everyone in Lempton knows. These guys we used to go out in 30, 40s, drones of people to gigs, places, and if there was any trouble, we used to be like, Always there, you know. We, we, we know the SPs, the old yeah, school yeah, SPs. Yeah, yeah. So there would have been different kind of um, operating things, you know, like SAC. Yeah, yeah. If you, you're Zach, just in a, yeah, yeah. He yeah. was um, always. I used to go to Nottingham, so I used to. No, he was one of our most influential 
brothers, you see what, what it is with me. I've got a lot of stories, so yeah. this is going to just end up spilling everywhere. No, but this is good because... Because the podcast about, is yeah, long, it? But it's also in terms of, like, patching <coughs> things together and understanding... I, just a bit, I get a bit um, conscious of where the hell's the story going on Gun Torpy. No, it's good. From Jazzy B's ended up... But it, it actually all... Yeah, it comes in. back, it comes back. There was someone the other day who I respect um, massively. My old, you know, I think of him like my older brothers. Mm. Big Chima, promoter. He walked me onto stage on Sunday... And Dami Kang from Leamington, absolute martial arts expert to, like, I'm personally saying this, I don't care what anyone else thinks, they're like two of the most um, brave, courageous, handiest men, if you like, yeah. you'll find, that I know, yeah, that, for I know as much as I need to know, um, I'm not, you know, I'm not talking about start putting them into Tyson Fury and all this, <laughs> like, yeah. you know, but you know, when you've seen something yourself, so I've got so much respect for them, and all this happened in Leamington, because there was a group of, um, you call them gangs, and I was growing up, and I wanted to be part of them, and you know, because any who wouldn't want to be in it, and mm. um, it's a brotherhood, isn't it? Yeah, and so all the boys in there, that's one of the reasons why this courage and bravery came into me, because I grew up around them, and we did some pretty crazy stuff, as you can imagine, and as that grew up, it went into my music. So mm. when I, as soon as when it got to Oman, by this time I was already used to streets as in in England as many people are going to relate to this I'm not saying I'm some gangster yeah. anything like that I'm, not, I'm just talking telling what happened yeah, yeah. So it's not that oh, I was a bloody he-man I thought I was really strong but you took a passion also into music as well right so then it went into like I'm saying I was protective of the artists yeah, I was yeah, yeah, yeah. and I had um, and then what would happen is I'm on done I won't touch it. no one's touching him Shindabadi was kind of in touch with but then what happened my break happened in New York Right, and Oman had come there, and I wanted to meet them, and it was like, I was the biggest Jazzy B fan. Like, I can't tell you how big, because I saw him on stage, I remember sneaking out of my house, going to a gig, and, uh, and you know, for the night, and I saw him in Palais de Dance in Leicester, and he had his hair, and I was just, like, mesmerised. Like, absolutely out of this world, you know, seeing Jazzy singing Folk Call Attraction songs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's like, oh, stay, stay, <laughs> wow, right, you know, like, and, because uh, I got, um, a big story from my upbringing in India. I went to India a lot when I was a kid. That's why, um, you know, I can speak in Punjabi and stuff like that and understand it pretty well. So the Punjabi inf uh, influence was there. And then I meet Jazzy in New York. Aman takes me backstage. He said, come on, like the tour bus. Because you're in New York from England. I meet Joggers. I remember Joggers was the nicest man to me. He took me in. I'm a kid. Absolutely. You know, we say starstruck. There's never anyone as starstruck as this. I've come. I'm in New York. I ain't seen no one for months and months. All these boys, these gangs, everyone who's been involved with it. I haven't seen Oman. And I meet Oman after so long. And I meet. He takes me straight into the middle of the band. And I meet these people for the first time. Joggers are like, come here. What do you want? Puts his arm around me. And I was like, wow. And this guy. And then um, Umbi was there. And all these. Like, Billy was there on the door. So mm -hmm. I'm like, flipping out. Look at him. Like this guy on the door. The machine gun. Oh my God. And I was thinking, I thought I was good. I thought, <laughs> shit, I thought I was good. And then I saw him. I was like, oh my God. What the hell is this? What the hell is this? And then, then the king came in. You know, I remember being in, like in a bar. And we were sitting there and the king came in. I was like, shit, I was frozen. I was sitting there. I was, bro, I'm not joking. I couldn't move. Mm. But Jazzy walked in. I get done. He sat down and he was just like there. And he was talking. And I was just sitting in the corner, just looking at him. I was in the corner, like, <laughs> just trying to glimpse that he's freaking sitting there. That's how much, like, it meant to well, me. Well, I know, man. Just yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just me. <laughs> you know. But you then, know. from there, fast-tracked, I got smashed and stuff. I started singing Bolian. I used to, like, do Bolian, sing high-pitched, innit? And they're like, what the hell? This guy, and I used to do funny songs and stuff like that as well, mm -hmm. yeah? That's why I got writing. <laughs> I got some background to a writing, yeah? <laughs> anyway, flipping, then Jazzy was like, because I was singing on high pitches, he, straight away it brought me into his attention. So he's like, hey, we and like, you know, it was all jokes and stuff, yeah, nothing yeah. serious. But then, obviously, a bit down the line, Billy couldn't make it to one tour. And that's when I got my ticket. And they're like, the woman said, you, you're coming on tour. Like, get the door ready, practice. And I was like, what? He's like, with Jazzy B, you're playing with him. And they took me for my first gig. It was in Cardiff, I remember. And um, it must have been about 2000 and two or three so did you have like i always wanted to know this so you, if you're you're fresh coming into um into the band yeah do you have like the rehearsal beforehand or anything or are you or, yeah. or are you get like the playlist sent to you before and no, say no, you no, need no. to do this not with, not with. or you just you've got one rehearsal and then the show remember the legend the 
the probably the guy with the most musical knowledge in this country at this moment, Sukhinder Shinda at that point, even now I would say he's just something else, yeah? For people who know, again, I've seen this close up, but yeah. he used to make us practice four hours of time at a time sometimes in the, every single week, especially when, when I started playing for party, every single week there used to be rehearsals for two hours on Thursdays, I think it was... Regardless if there's a show or not. Yeah, for years, for years, and it, it used to be a bit of a pain, like coming from Leamington, most of the guys are from Birmingham, I used to have to drive up every time. First it used to be me and Aman, because Aman was in the band. This is what going on to in Shinda by his band. Yeah. But then Aman started his own stuff, and then I was in the band on my own, so he should come on my own. Yeah. There's a lot of commitment. Oh, yeah, a yeah. A lot of shows. At one point, we'd done tripping 52 weeks in a year. We must have done over 150 shows. I remember in a good couple of years. Like, so you imagine Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah, Friday, yeah, Saturday, yeah. Sunday. Because you're doing all the club gigs during the week, universities, doing everything. It's crazy, man. Shinda body was so busy. Obviously, Jazzy was busy as well. They were both. They yeah. were like ultimate. No one was on their level, you know, like for so long. So in terms of, we're going to talk about sacrifice at this point. You just said 150 shows that I'm you're guessing, doing. I'm guessing, isn't it? Yeah, I'll do it. We'll, we'll, add Might we'll say five. 300. Might have been about five. But, <laughs> <laughs> but that's going to that's gonna take a cost on your <coughs> family life as well at the same time. And probably you individually... <laughs> Growing, did you, see, it? It work. so you just saw it's just pure work to that as well. Yeah, it went a jolly. Like when you at first, it was like, like going back to when Jazzy took me on a tour first time. I remember in Canada. Oh my god, that was just like the, it was probably the best times of your life when you look back at them. How old were you, know, you at this stage? I would have been about 22, 22 okay. so it's about 20 years ago. Yeah, and um, but being around him, it, it was mental because he was really big. Remember, there's no social media. And it was like TV, and it was just like an aura, and you knew like who was a big and who wasn't, and you couldn't, you didn't see much of your artist, you didn't see much of them, and Jazzy was freaking out, absolutely humongous in my mind when I think about it. I think he was so. And then going on tour with him, imagine touring Las Vegas when you're 22 years old, <laughs> Las Vegas, right? LA in an RV, staying with these guys. Umbi's there, the funniest guy. Umbi used to be such a love. Joggers, Popsy. Um, then there was the, the drummer Cham Aman was with me, so I got my brother there at the same time mm. while I'm on tour. Shindabadi didn't go to that tour, so it was a bit more crazy. You know, when Shindabadi went there, yeah, he used to a little bit like, more license. Oh, then it's like it's proper mental, isn't it? <laughs> then, then I remember meeting Jazzy's mates who were famous, like um, Satinder Kala. Like, I remember meeting him, you know, he wrote them amazing songs. Mm -hmm. And this is all US at this moment, even flights didn't used to be like they are now, innit? Now mm. it's like there's a flight every second. So it wasn't that bad, but you know what I mean? But it's like, yeah, it's yeah, well, that's yeah. common uh, in flights and stuff. So, all so that, what kind of advice are you getting from, from these guys? Are they taking their time out and uh, educating you or helping you? or you know, in, Just being around yeah. people like Jazz is <coughs> an education. Just being around him. You know, the way he used to... His biggest education to me was, you know, when he used to go on stage, and I'm a mum like this time and I'm drinking and all these sort of things. I shouldn't say more than I said in the other podcast, so I'll never say that word. You know, I failed on that Same one. Anyway. But we'll start again soon in a few weeks on that. Yeah. But um, <laughs> Jazzy, basically, he one thing he did which really touched me is he used to put a ramal on his head, just on top, like a little towel, and just before he's going on stage, and he used to go in the corner and he used to start doing a das. I knew it was a das, I'm pretty sure it was, uh, or it was a part or a das. I think it was in the das. And that really touched me. Or looking back at it, always, I used to stand there and think, What's he doing? Like, okay, that's he's doing part, isn't it? That's right. All right, that's good. But in the back, he's dropping a seed in. You know, that positive impact. I'm not making this up. I'm not, I'm not just saying it. It really had an effect on me. Because I used to think, people say, like, these like, artists do this, they drink, and they no share God there. there. People make this shit up, yeah? I've never seen him. And one thing he was so strong about, he said, he never, ever touches a nusha and goes on stage. And he was, like, so strict on it. I should be like, forget that, we want to have a glossy on stage, man. He's too strict. Jazzy B, this is, yeah? People made up rumours there, Nasheare, Daru Pindi, all this. And he was the actual one, because it had been drilled into him, maybe from Shindapadi, I don't know. I think it would have been a, quite an influence from Shindapadi that you never drink or do a Nasha when you're going on stage. And so that little bit of advice had a knock-on knock effect on me to make me identify that drinking is not good, there is something that's not good about this, this stuff is good. This doing this sardas, this bar sort of stuff. So I was able to identify, okay, that's a goal. 
I want to try and become like this at this point. And it started from these guys. But it didn't start from them guys. But no, it because, no, no, yeah, it was impact because, you know, I read something because, when you were talking about on your 21st birthday, you, was it your, your grandma passed away? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then that experience that going, yeah, yeah, that we had an experience going on to where well, you're yeah, at yeah. a wedding in Coventry where you went down to and you found yeah. a vodka sub. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And smiling because he's done your research, you tell me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But then I know because when I asked you how old you were, you were 20, yeah, 22. Proper host, you are. Proper host, I'm telling you. Research, we could be proper. <laughs> That's rated. I'm just saying, like, because yeah. I, I, we've discussed this. Um, There's a lot many, of factors. Yeah, yeah that yeah. It, it culminated. I it think was what you're the... looking for, I get what you're looking for. You're, we're trying to build a story here. And it's going to come to the turning point. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the climax is going to be the turning point. But the thing is... There's so many reasons which lead up to a moment where, you know, that moment, it's really hard for me to put it. So don't think that in this interview, yeah, it's not, it's not I a, can't explain it. Yeah, fully. it's not A plus B plus yeah, C. So there's there's, there's, there's lot loads missing. of different routes going on at the yeah, same yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, Like I say, to be honest, actually, this is a good, good point. I mentioned Jazzy and the Ardas and Shindapaji's qualities, which really had an impact because, remember, they were my role models. Mm -hmm. Anything they do has an effect on me. But then you all mentioned... Um, the Gordwar and the Gotka, these are later on, you're going forward, yeah? But all these um, impact, all these things have an impact, yeah. eventually. They all accumulate, and what it comes down to is inside, at some point, you make a decision early on in your life, like it could be when you're 12, that I want to be, um, I want to have um, ethics, and I want to have morals. Somewhere early on in your life, you've already made that decision. Mm. So you roll it back. Imagine everyone, I want everyone to think, about this, whoever's watching this, go back. At some point when you was a young kid, you would have decided, I'd rather be a good person than a bad person. And then what happens is as you're growing, as you're growing, you're seeing this good, bad, good, bad, good, bad. And you always want to make the the good man decision, don't you? Mm. you? See what I'm saying? So the experience is, it's about where your focus is. And if you keep looking for like, you know, the good good side, trying to become better, trying to become better, it leads to a big change. I'm gonna risk a story here, in, and it and it could be wrong, but I, I don't. I want you to kind of think about it and see if, whether this part was true. Okay. That you were on <coughs> you were on tour at one stage, and then you were gonna perform, or you're part of a tour, or something was going on with a singer, and you just immersed yourself in so much Barney. You kept reading that you wouldn't come out and perform, or you didn't you didn't take part in the tour. Oh, right, um. No, 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 no. There is one actually. You mentioned one. It was in San Francisco. I'd kept my hair at this point. Okay. So I'd already kept my hair, and um, and uh, I think I remember going to Sindapai saying like, I'm going to stop this because I didn't know what was religiously. Can you play at all? How can I do this if I'm a singer? I don't think you can. I didn't know the rules and regulations, yeah. and so I was a bit nervous. I wanted to do it properly, and Sindapai said it's all right. Look, no, no, they they play at all. It's an instrument. He explained to me, look, no, it's not a bad thing. But I was young and I was thinking, okay, but I didn't want to be in that environment, I think, because there was drink and stuff like that. I wanted to get away from it all. And then I went on stage in, I think it was in Vancouver. And I was, uh, oh, I was oh, sorry, America, I think it was in America. And um, there, I was really, inside me, I just didn't want to do this no more. Mm. But it wasn't because it was bad. It was just like, there's something changing. It was just making decisions for you, this feeling. So I just get away and it's almost like getting to jungles. You just want to get in the jungle out of this stuff and you need a bit of a break. And that, then slowly, then I went into this sort of, you call it a forest, mm. for the next few years. And um, when I say forest, I actually mean like, I started going towards nature a bit more. Um, I started enjoying nature a lot more. Like, started take organising camps where I wanted to learn about Sikhi and all these other guys when they were, you know, when we were going to become insane, they all wanted to learn as well. So I would arrange like mad places where we go and sit and we study Gurbani and stuff and all positive, like try and you train and do things, um, work out, eat clean and then do Simran together. So we try and all these things that we've heard are good and you do that first. Is In Gurbani it comes in um, Karam Khand, you know, when you your actions start to change. So the first thing is you start to fix your actions. You think I'm going to get God through this. Mm. But you learn later on down the line that you can't. Mm. Through actions, you don't please the master. So Not through actions alone, anyway. As this, you're going through this kind of internal epiphany, this revelation within yourself, 
what was the reaction in terms of your peers where you were living? Because obviously you, you've just said you've grown up in a huge gang area, a lot of lads and stuff and that. Because you, yeah. when, I, when, I, yeah, when, I, when I see you, <coughs> I never see you on your own. It's always been with a, a, a bunch of other people with you. Did it start rubbing off on them? What was, Were there some people who were just like, Kaka, what are you doing? Yeah, it was a mix, it was a mix. And how did you deal with that though? At the time, I can remember it, it bugged you a bit, but the, the urge is too strong. And then when you start looking into Sikhi and stuff, it just overpowers everything. It's like everything just becomes, nothing matters. Everything just goes whoosh, small, every problem. So any problem I've ever had, I've had a solution immediately. I've had a solution, no matter what problem, solution comes, solution comes. So I've never ever gone into any sort of negative area from the second I went in. All it was is about then your learning of your inner self starts. That's what started. First you think becoming a sink, all this external stuff, you know what people see. But um, that's, that's actually just a very starting point. You know, I'm, I'm, tr I'm working out kind of like your stage and age as well at the same time. Because there'll be many people who listen, Bro, you watch this. Make a film on me, I swear. We're going to have to make a film. We're going to do a film. I'm, I'm telling you, because my songs are going to be everywhere all the time now. <laughs> my songs are going to be everywhere. I'm like dying to start singing on this thing. I just want to tell you, I'm so confident. We'll, we'll be all right, man. We'll, we'll yeah, get, we're getting gonna, there. Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't want to blow the before. speakers. You know what I'd say before? I'd say, I'm going to crack the cameras. But because I've got a job as a postman now, I just want to do my job. Okay. Let, but let, I'm, going, I'm going let's too far. Yeah, yeah, we'll get to the postman. Yeah, yeah. But okay. you see how I'm yeah. urging to go because I'm an artist now. <laughs> this is like, forget my background. Forget me being all nice and humble, yeah? Now that you know that angry side comes out of me because it's to do with my job. I'm taking my job very seriously. So, so you know Come we, on to the sicky part, the beautiful part. No, no, relax. I'm still, I'm still paying the picture. Nothing here. comes close to the sicky part. Not because, nothing comes close. Not because obviously when I got to know you, um, it was around 2013 is, what, is, um, is when I first got yeah, to know yeah, you yeah, at yeah, that we point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And um, I remember one of the first comments that you that you said, that said to me <laughs> at that time. So... Just to let everybody know um, where I was, I was in uh, doing substance misuse stuff, like oh, drug and alcohol yes. rehab. Oh, wicked. I could sing that song today. I made a song of that. Remember, I actually <laughs> released a song with you. Like, yeah, that was on. There was about four people who downloaded that. We went on three of them were in this room. You went on the Nihal show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We went on. We went on. I was like, did they need a gay? I know, but what I'm saying to you Just is... Just saying to people, this mission that I'm on now, the postman where I've come to now, man, I just don't look up. Oh, you took the route back in the day. Now, now, what I'm saying, I've done my posting. graft. I'm done my graft, and basically nobody can cancel me. That's what now, I want to Now say. it's signed, you know, signed for delivery. I want to drop this in, because I'm going to take this interview, control of this interview now. Right? No, you're not. <laughs> no, but what I'm saying <laughs> is, yeah, nobody can cancel me. I just want people to know that. Yeah, some people out there thinking, oh, he does this wrong, he does that wrong. I want the haters. If there's any, because I told you I'm mad side of me. Yeah. And a few people said to me, I just want to make this point, sorry, I don't want to interrupt you. A few people said to me, I was at Effing and Blinding on Instagram the other week, innit? Effing and Jeffing, yeah. Effing and Jeffing. <laughs> and they're like, why are you doing that for don't stick to people's levels? I've only had about three people, yeah. these bot accounts saying, why aren't you mentioning this? Why aren't you better? And I looked at their bot accounts, so I thought, right, I'm just going <laughs> to have to blind up, yeah? The reason is, I want people to know I'm a totally normal person and I don't care about my image, I don't care about how people kind of perceive what we're doing, yeah. because to do my work, which is, I'm a postman, I'm going to sound mental on purpose, because I want people to think this guy's lost the plot, he's gone mental, but because, why? Why? because why? I'm mental in love with what my job Oh, so is. you're crazy in love? With my work, which is to sing, to write, and to basically educate with these messages. But, like, I'm just... I'm going to finish off the other point because I think it's quite relevant really yeah. which was when I first came to you because I needed help and support because I was writing a, a drug and alcohol program you know for, yeah, yeah, to get that. people off it and um, the second sentence I won't say the first sentence but the second one you said like I've been around all the Jatabundis in, in the country yeah and yeah. I've come back to myself it's just yeah, me me and Barney that's it because like that you, was later on that was later on but you said that to me back then? Yeah. Because yeah. you were hanging around with, yeah, we you, you know, you I went, went to all the different 
Yeah, organizations and stuff like that. It's interesting because that was 2013 I said that to you then. Yeah, it? yeah. So, yeah, at first, when I come, become a thing, you go everywhere. And I did go, I don't, I, I had a thirst. Like, I would drive three hours, get a car, car load together of boys who were interested in the same thing, and we would drive three hours to different parts of UK on a Thursday night. We've got to go work on Friday with us. Yeah. 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 Different circles of companies. When you had the love for Tarbik music, and especially when I had Daljit and, the, and that relationship when it came, yeah, you know that came out of both of your journeys through Sikhi. Those all wasn't it that relationship? Or have I got that wrong? Mm, I think Buddy knew about me a little bit before, before I'd become a saint because they, you know, through Facebook started coming. Yeah, so that helped me connect a lot with him. Like I knew him from. Probably 2012, 2011. Right then, you see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like in touch with him, just a few messages and stuff, yeah. Yeah. But then it got, obviously, I met him through True School. Yeah. The other master in Derby, as we know. So yeah. there's, the, we talked about the other masters, but then equally, I've, I've spent time with True School yeah, as yeah, well. Yeah. And um, he was phenomenal as well, in the same way. But he was, True with Suk by his was basically a new generation was getting up. Yeah. It was like a new generation, although Sook's of the same generation, um, literally of Oman, I think he's older than Oman, but um, he was more like the Coventry influence, you know, through Deepa, my good friend, who was the manager of Bazaar Records, and then Specialist is um, also a good friend. He's related to Bali Rai from Leamington. This all happened afterwards when I met Bao, but what I'm saying is there's connections. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So all of a sudden, that connection was getting strong. So now... After I become a saint, the jazzy one, because um, I stopped the bands and I kind of stopped the whole environment, then it, uh, musically it led that way slightly. And then yeah. you joined part of that band on, on his first tour, didn't yeah, you? Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then your connection with, how did, what did the, the DC in you then in terms of saying that I need, I need this guy with me, in your, in your opinion? He, I don't know, we just connected. What it is, is um, at that stage... Like, I spent a good time with Buddy when he was here on the first tour. But um, it was it was just normal. It was just, I was in awe of him, like I was all the time with the others. Yeah. I was just starstruck by by him. And um, and then obviously with Sook, I was in, under Sook's influence a lot around that time. But I had a very um, strong urge on the Sikhi side to do a track, you know, yeah. with him. At the time, I wanted to do a track to help Darren Sayer. Obviously, that had started. And I thought, obviously, he's big. If he does something, if he likes what we're doing, he could help like spread this message and help us do something non-profit. And that's all it was. And it wasn't nothing else. And then, But what happened was after that, um, in parallel to that, I, which was totally nothing to do with um, Diljit Badi or anybody, Dharam Seva had started. Mm. And Dharam Seva had another drive behind it because it's pure. Where it's coming from, the intention's pure. There's no money intention. There's no fame intention. It's purely for Sikhi, you know, for the the actual the fire of Sikhi, for that flame. Yeah, and that was on a diff. There's a different energy in that. I'm not going to hark on it too, to the too much. But when you look at his journey now, and you look at your journey mm. where you are with Daljeet, yeah. and see how massive he is now, yeah. What advice would you have given yourself at the start of that journey? Nothing. Everything's amazing. Even now, he's amazing with me. He's the most. Um, he, he's the most influential over, on my mind because I spent time with him. He's just something. Mm -hmm. It's hard. Like I don't talk about it. I don't want to talk about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Because I said before. But yeah, yeah. I get it. That was more because you know there's interviews now. He's that big. People just want you to talk about him in other interviews yeah. that have been asked. With you, is different. But he is. You know, we talked about Shinda body and Diljit and I'm um, sorry, Jazzy body and all that. This is a different, you're talking, you know, the words, I can't even think of the words, you're talking a whole different arena now. Mm -hmm. You've gone from 
Punjabi thing. What's going on here is something else. It's a different thing. Uncharted territory now we're in. No, I wouldn't even say uncharted. I'm saying like it's No like, one's crossed over like this though. No, I'm saying it's like working before working in music used to be like let's say I don't know, I'm funny, how to, how to, how can I compare this from something small to something big. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a big comparison. It's just scalable games. in terms of what's, yeah, what's like, going on. It's like Sunday League, for example. Yeah. Playing Sunday League football, and then all of a sudden you're like, right. no, no, no. That's big. Hey, come I'm on. I'm a United fan, yeah? But you're a Real Listen. Madrid. I'm sorry. It's, it's a known fact. It's a known fact. We have to accept it. We're going to have to cut this part. This ain't the time to talk no. about Man United. No. We are not it as big is, as Real Madrid. It is the time, okay? You We're know. not as big as Real Madrid. So this was Real Madrid. The deep body's level. When I say level, shall I tell you what it comes down to? Mindset. That's what his level is. His level is not talking about all oh, what he's doing. I, I remember, and I'll say elite, this. Elite I'll mindset. say this one bit, and then, elite we'll, mindset. and then we'll we'll move on to something else. But you said something really interesting to me. I, I always remember some of your little snippets because you always give a little bit of wisdom. Was there where where you see some singers or you see some people in industry? They almost see it as a kind of a nighttime job. All the during the day, <laughs> they just just relax during the le- and then at night they don't come alive. But he is working from seven o'clock in the morning, watching, looking at things. He's got a work commitment and work ethic that's on parallel. Yeah. Is that? Do you think that's the key yeah. to his success? He's unique. He's elite. He is an elite, elite entertainer. He's not. This ain't a joke. What he's doing. It's not like oh, he just. Because he gives no, because he gives that character, doesn't he? <coughs> it's like the he's character where that. he's like, "Oh, I don't know how I've got here, blah." blah, blah. But there's method in the madness. The, the, no, but what it is is he's uh, like I said, he actually is an elite entertainer. Mm. Like you have elite sportsmen, you've got Cristiano Ronaldo, yeah, 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 Messi. Yeah, yeah. They are elite. Yeah, I never thought about it that way. Actually. And that is the only thing you could say. I know there's no point me talking about anything or saying anything to anyone. You're talking about one of the most elite performers in the world. I'm not messing about when I'm saying that. Like. I, I know that because I've been yeah, no, you've I've seen been it. in it yeah, in a close level and I know what he puts into his work which he loves like I would say 99% of everyone in the world I wouldn't I ain't seen them do it I mean he's so humble he would always say that everyone works hard I, I'm so what yeah. if I work hard but no man he, it's not work hard so you in, it's it, you know, amazing what he does it's amazing. with him and you know when you talked about Shindamaji you've talked about Omenhea yeah about and they all work hard and you've seen it's quite unique, really. You've seen everyone going up towards their towards yeah. their peak. Uh, yeah, I've read. That's I've really, read some surf. I've that is surfing, really. That's really rare. Surfing. That is. <laughs> I'm hoping you rub up on me. Hey, who's next? Oh come on, man. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, we'll, we'll, we'll <laughs> get into it. Yeah, I'm joking. I need. I need. I need, no, but, I need no, no, some. No, your clay. Look at the same time. Self confidence. Yeah. Self confidence. Why should I sit here and not think that I can get there as well? What's the difference between? The confidence that he's showing and, and arrogance. Oh, good question. It's all about your intention. If my if it was arrogance, my intention would be I'm doing it for me. But do you think the audience that see you on uh, social media, where you, where you're where you're talking about things, will understand that? No, not at all. They're not going to understand anything I'm talking about. <laughs> I swear to God, <laughs> the only thing they're going to understand is the melody. Yeah. Da 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 they're going to connect maybe to one beat. My market's going to be so small, I think, yeah. I don't expect a lot of listeners. But if one of them gets it, bingo, I'm thinking. Yes, Not because get I, in. Yeah, even get today, I'll, I'll, get in. you know, today I'll be, I'll be, I'll be I'm I was saying, humming your song. I was, no, I was humming your song in the background, you know, I'm just, you know, just, no, just I'll be honest with you, I'll be, I'm getting mad feedback right now. Okay, like, let, 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 let's, let's pause it here for one second. Yeah, and I want you to... Actually, I'm explain. ready to get onto my music, innit? We're, get, we're getting there now. I want you to explain. We're after the episode, innit? Yeah, no, I want to. Extension, laddie. No, I want to talk about what does what does the poster mean and how did we get to here? So, from a five year hiatus, good man. I'll a, tell you what. I love this interview. This yeah. is like I'm going to pin this on Instagram. This is really good. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> where, where you've gone from, we, you know, we've shown one angle from you. Well, multiple angles in yeah. your part of your career, and all this. You've taken a five-year hiatus. You've well, I'm still back. working. I've done the... But that's what I want to... Know, like, I like saying this because... I want you to tell me first and yeah. everyone else. Why was there a five-year hiatus? There weren't no hiatus. <laughs> I'm just, God, okay. Yeah, in your words or however. And then what triggered you to come back 
and the meaning of the postman and to where we are today. So I'm going to put it okay. in your, in whatever route, or whatever road you want to pave way and explain. Um, this is where I'm going to let, let you go. No, I can on. get, if you this bit, there is a bit of arrogance which comes in. So I'm going to be honest about no, but th it. No, but that's why I asked the question, mm. because what's the difference between arrogance and confidence? So how do we marry that together? No, no, now, now there's a few now, statements which I don't need to say. If I was humble, I wouldn't probably say these statements, but because I'm going to say them, it's arrogance. But I'm sorry, not I want to, to get your opinion after this, what you think about this. Because <coughs> Melinda, I know you're going to be your team him anyway, but Sonny, I'm going to come back to you. Okay, Sonny, Sonny's heavily involved in this, by the way. This is more about celebrating and celebrating your yours and your team's achievements, what I'm about to talk about. Okay. Right? Um, and when I say... Arrogance because I've Hang on, mentioned. before we stop, when did I get kicked out of uh, the of Durham Was it you when the WhatsApp group went? You're never kicked out. You're always can, we get, can I just get that? I need that confirmed, actually. Group, oh, bro, we had about 30, 40 people in the group at <laughs> yeah. one point. Innit? I was part of your team, and then You're still part soon of as team. the DK, <coughs> I, I had to piss off. No, 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 no. no. You didn't have to piss <laughs> off then. It went then. You, you're still part of the team. Oh, okay, thanks. I had never even got a t shirt. The, the group's gone like this for many years. It's been massive at one point, then it went down. It's hard to manage a lot of people. Okay. I'm doing all this oh, in the thanks. Background. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for that. Didn't even get. A, didn't remember, even get a text. I think his role was you're supposed to get us some funding for the charity. Nah, mate. Bez was a leg out. Bez was a leg out. Charity. I, I need one charity. I told you we're the one charity who never begs people for money. I think Mangateni, okay. Oh yeah, yeah. That's, that's, fair, that's, fair, that's, that's fair. That's fair. I work with Kertikar. The Guru Nanak Dev Ji said Kertikaro. So I don't ask no one for no money. Okay. Yeah. I don't ask no one. I'll say, I'll work my way and I'll do it myself. Well, we did the conference. Come on, I launched the... Did the Can you put a link here? Donate. <laughs> <laughs> Can you put a link here? Donate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did the conference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did the conference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, We've volunteered and nobody has ever taken a salary to do all that work for over 10 years. Yeah. Look what we've achieved. No, I, I, I know that's, that. That's, a, yeah, I that's something I, I celebrate. So I'm very arrogant. I, school, no, but God, I honestly, I've just done an episode which I recorded and I talked about how people, when they're doing um, Save Our, especially for organisations, and uh, GS Number Brindy are one of, one of our lads. Top He's, guy. He, all, lad. he always says, you know, like looking at. Using Gyan, <coughs> wherever you're going to donate, always use your brain. In terms of doing. Yeah, because, yeah. because even like you guys are. Make it no, not because you guys are spearheading. Is bad. You guys are spearheading no, like a dharmic, the dharmic genre is getting bigger and bigger, coming in more mainstream. And it's a hard, one of the hardest tasks. All it is, I'll tell you what it is. All it is, I've always worked, I've always had a job, a good job. And I enjoy my work while yeah. working in IT, innit? And um, obviously, I'm talking about New York, I have to do the MCSE. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. Those sort of things, you utilise them. But what it is, is, you know, um, we've always done it in Nishkam. Not because it's bad if you take money. I don't, I've got nothing against anyone who gets paid. But all it is, is I felt my intention is so pure towards Sikhi. It always has been, even right now, it's so pure, right, towards Sikhi. Like, I can't tell you how pure it is. That's how pure it is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, I, it's always been like that. But I've always thought if I start taking money for what I'm doing, if I justify it, um, it might end up happening in the mm. future because I'm doing this music stuff. If I can do this full time, flip yeah. it out. You you'd, it. you'd consider it. I would have thought I'd consider it only if it was like hundreds of thousands. You know, I'm, I'm dreaming a bit big there, right? Where you don't need to have that kind of anything else in your life. You just do this. But the thing is, that system's obviously not there, right? So I never ever wanted to take a penny, and I, I still feel the same way because I don't want it to touch my intention. You get okay. me? Hi, Aitis. Why did you take the break? And then fit the, I'm going to pass it off. The break, like then. I said, yeah, it was um, social media. Was I was around, you know, doing a lot of stuff, which is, you know, you could call it confidential and working with elite level yeah. artists. I don't want to be publishing everything I'm doing because the whole world wants to know what you're doing at that moment when you're with an elite artist. And I, I just wanted to, you know, do be professional in what I'm doing. And then obviously the bits where we started getting big was... You imagine when Charles Sebs are there, when I bidded, I took that film um, yeah. and bidded with the big boys and got it and put deposits down because we wanted to serve that film out in time and, and just with that, I think people forget how, how successful Charles Sebs are there. Even today, if you go on Rentrack, someone um, told me 
I've known this quite a few times. It's the most successful box office Punjabi film in um, cinemas to date, apparently. I don't know if maybe, I don't know if anything's beat it, but that's what I last heard just a couple of years ago. Because it it wasn't a film release, we did it like, you know how you serve London in the Godwana? Yeah, it was everywhere. Yeah, they put the fire, they put all the yeah, 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 yeah. We were serving that film in cities, pushing it, saying, look, put it on, put it on, save our, teach the next gen. So much passion in Vienna. Went to Germany, went to Italy, you name it. Awesome, With Bill, yeah. me and Bill, at the time we smashed it. We put it, we put it everywhere, and it, there was an effort that went into it. So because of, because of what the work that you're doing, you took stuff offline. Then then what happened? We break the box office record. It does make noise in India. People do realize who distributed this film. What the hell's going on here? It, uh, in other parts of the world, it's not as strong. What's going on in England? Who is it? And that's when I got a big line into India through Gippy's team and people like that because they, we did it for free as well we didn't charge for that film didn't make no money in it I told you mm. when it comes to Sikhi our intention is clean yeah. so they were like straight away what the hell they're doing it for free this film's like made massive money why would you not take that money but I was like no chance I don't want it it's my guru's history I'm not interested in the money I didn't do it for the money pushed it back and then that trickled out that I remember Jazzy Buddy ringing and saying they're talking about you in India I'm so proud of what you've done and this and that. They heard about the money thing. So from there onwards, we basically, people were giving us films. So I did all this and that. These guys are like, you know. Mm. So that's how we got into the films. And then it went into the shows, started doing concerts. Because we, you know, we were starting to herd people towards venues. Naturally, obviously, I'm in the Deeds band at the same time. And I started getting stronger. And obviously, then I did a couple of shows and I did big concerts and then ended up landing his shows and doing, I was fully managed um, 2018, the tour, which was the biggest ever in UK, mm. sold out, broke all records and then come back and even better did in 2022, all because of him, because of his opportunity, but we were involved in that work. So having seen that elite level mentality, that's where it led to and then pff, where we are now. So in them five years where I was off social media, yeah. these are the things I was doing. You were working. We were hit, breaking records being on his team and he was basically guiding us and being part of his team. It's all because of him, everything that happens. But imagine being part of um, two concerts which are broke records in UK twice and nothing's come close to him, nothing. So you as a singer now, I want you to explain the postman and where we are now and what the kind of the next sort of six months look like. So then I mentioned another thing. I didn't know I could write songs. Yeah. Always. When I used to be a singer back in the day, writing was the bit that put me off. Cause if you, you don't know where your next song's going to come from, these sort of things. And then in September, I start, I saw the AP Dillo documentary. I've mentioned on another podcast. Yeah. People see, and I started just trying it and it started flowing and it's clicked. And now it's clicked that much. That I can write a song on any anything, only what's inside me. Yeah. Like if you said to me, write me a song about this and that, I'll give you this. I can't do it. I don't want to do it. I ain't got time to put my mind anywhere other than my spirituality and write what's going on within the human mind. That's my speciality, what's going on inside us and the girl in it. And then taking it into a whole depth, into a cave of spirituality. So I'm just in my zone, enjoying myself, in my spirituality, in love with the entire planet, totally in love. When I'm saying that, I'm saying like, utmost love for every single person who I come across. I'm struggling to find an enemy in the world. Even if I find one, I can't hate no one. I can't hate anybody. Do you, and that's coming in my music. Do you find though, that you have any, you know, when we talked very early on about when you didn't want to perform on stage, when you were getting that guidance, do you even get that kind of moral or value conflict now from what the way that you see in the world today? Because no, 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 it's changed. much different from what it is. When you start off, you go into through Karam Khand and through different zones where you do actions, you keep your dadi first, you stop meat, shrab, all these sort of things come in, just rules, rules and regulations. You go into the religion, you fall into the religion. For many years I was in that religion, I'm still so proud of that religion because I know it leads, it's part of the journey. But once you start going into Gurbani and you start understanding it, and I don't think, don't think this is me saying, you know, someone special. Mm. This is like really simple knowledge. Like when you say don't hate no one, how hard can that be? Like to actually, 
yeah, to constantly hear these Shabbas where it's saying, if someone's being bad to you, how hard is it really to do that? Think for someone mm. who's doing bad to you. It's actually really easy to apply these. It's not that hard if you keep trying, keep trying. And then slowly, slowly, your inner self starts changing. You stop hating on anything. And, you start, and then, for example, you know, when you start researching what that means, you know, that there's one, there's just one. Firstly, that's all you need to know. Like, I'm not even going to go any deeper. Just the first word, the first number. Ik. If you just start thinking, there's only one. Guru Nanak's saying there's only one. Wait a second. There's only one. There's what? What's, what's all this? Mm. You see what I'm saying? It's it's start, you, we start going now into a spiritual zone, which is an amazing place. And that's where basically all you and is it the, nowadays. So when you're, when you're doing the album and the decision to do the album, how... <coughs> why do an album? Well, what it is, is I can't help expressing, you know, my Sikhi, you know, when I read a Shabbat, yeah, mm. when I start um, reading a Shabbat, I can't help express and um, you know, start expressing myself. You're like, for example, we started speaking now. Now I'm going to start going into an inner zone where I'm starting to, I want to talk. I want to explain to you, because I, I feel it's going to better your life. It, and for me, that's seva in the sense that dunia la pala of it. If you start understanding the Shabbat, there's no bigger pala anyone can do for you. For anyone, there's no bigger gift because your ignorance inside us, the darkness, that basically becomes enlightened with Gyan of the Guru. That's what it is. So the Shabbat basically just lights and you start seeing another world within yourself. Beautiful world. That's as simple as it is. That's really as simple as it is. I don't want to complicate it and make it think, make it look to anyone that they can't do it. Or you need to have this and that. And spirituality is really simple. And it's, you can watch Nanak Naam, he's amazing, I find. Basics of Sikhi, you can watch Sikh uh, to inspire. Yeah, you can look at Midland Langar Seva doing Seva and look at them and be inspired. You can look at Ravi Singh from Khal Saeed. Mm -hmm. People like that, great role models. And you'll start to see Sikhi, what it's doing to people. It's beautiful what it does to people. But equally, there's another side as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The religious side, where religious control, where people start to feel nasty towards others. Why have you got that? Why don't you want a Ramal in the Godwara? And the hatreds come out on the side, on the name of God. You're now accessing hatred, but you're in the name of God, yeah? You start to see things getting a bit more on the other side, towards the Kaam Kurov, Lomo, Hankar. You start to see um, these displaying more, but in the name of God. So all of a sudden, the other side, the five virtues, Sat, Santok, Daya, Kema, Nimrta, yeah? These uh, forgiveness, compassion, humbleness, you know, you're seeing less of that. So now you know, where, where should I go? Should I go where I'm seeing Kaam, Kroh, Lo, Mohankar? Or should I go where I'm seeing Sat, Santor, Deya, Kema, Nimrta? Where I'm seeing people forgive people, people be kind. And this is where I am. I'm in this one because that's where you want to be. The Guru is saying you want, to be in, you want to be forgiving people. You want to be compassionate towards people. You want to, be, you want to have humility. And the one thing I keep going on about, if you put all these together, is love. You want to be in a state of love mm -hmm. with the world. So that's what my message is in my music. <clears throat> the postman is going to be posting these messages. So the postman is basically the delivery service of what you... This message inside me yeah. is Gurbani. It's not me. I don't want no credit for it. I will not accept any credit for it. No chance. Right? You can say to me, and millions of people can say to me tomorrow, well done, you did a good job. It means nothing to me. I don't want your praise. I don't want nobody's praise. The praise goes to the Guru who actually created it. Not created, but who gave out this information, whose knowledge it is. And I'm just a postman. I'm just picking up a package that the Guru wrote, and I'm passing it to you, to you, to you, and to you. I'm a postman. I'm a postman, and I will even dress as postman Pat, right? <laughs> I will even dress as um, a Royal Mail postman if I have to. I will dress as a postman in India on the bike if you want me to. Because I'm going to deliver the message. And what I'm doing now, my Vardi on stage at the moment, where I dress up for the top yeah, line, yeah, yeah. I want the attention of all you people mm. because I'm going to post a message to you. I'm going to give you something. If I don't have that attention... So you're, you're using the social media ag algorithms, you're using all, all the little bits of hooks to get yeah, everybody I know why I'm doing what I'm doing. Yeah. And the reason I'm doing it, because life is too short. Oh. Nobody knows. You know, I could be dead tomorrow morning, right? Yeah. I don't think so because I've got a deal with God at the moment. Well, let me do my postman work. <laughs> don't take me yet. I want to stay. Yeah, I want to stay because I'm really enjoying myself yeah. doing this. So I've got a bit of a thing going on with him at the moment saying, 
give me give me good good time in it. So I'm gonna get to the last couple of questions and then I'm gonna let you kind of sing out for us if you want. Okay, okay I'll let you do that. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, <laughs> yeah, what does the kind of the next six to twelve months look like for you? Um, crazy, bro! Absolutely amazing. You know, I talked about the best times of my life with these supreme artists yeah. who are amazing. Yeah, I'm glad we talked about them because I want to dedicate. I love them all. Amazing. Anyone I've ever worked with, any musician, you will know. There's so many of them. I can't. If I start, I said one name of the week, and I'll, there's a list of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know who you are. Whoever I've worked with, whether it's on shows, whether it's in films. Whether it was in Dharam Seva, you've been a volunteer, you've helped us um, in the media. I know a lot of people in the media. All of them, whoever I've worked with, and and uh, above that is friends, friends, well wishers. You know, there's so many good people in the world, and we don't we forget about it. We take it for granted. And even if there's someone who doesn't like me and they've got a problem with me, I understand that as well. I understand that we can feel good and bad towards people. Don't worry about it. But I freaking love everyone. Yeah. I'm telling you, and this is the nasha. Of Garbani, so I just here. Garbani just makes you, Jin Prem ki Tini Prabhpayo. So there's other Shabads in Garbani, um, in Japji Sa Pa Kya Pao Apar. The language God speaks is love. Yeah? There's so many Shabads which talk about love, so many. And if that's the Guru's message, why aren't we giving this out? So the postman has to give this out now because I feel people need to know about this. Okay. You know what I mean? So from a postman yeah. to the bandwagon, Yes. Right. So is there, um, in every episode, I ask the guest, is there a bandwagon that they want to jump on? Is there a bandwagon that they want to jump off? Or is there anything that they want to get off the chest? This is the space to do so. Right, okay. No, I haven't got anything on my chest. Nothing. Nothing at all. My conscience is totally clean in that way. Okay. It's been an absolute pleasure. Yeah. And um, long overdue. And I'm sure this is going to be one of many different discussions that we're going to be having. Um, can I come back on your show soon? Of course you can. I'm regular. If you want why, to be a regular... Why don't you just have me on every week? Oh, well, I'm not going to stop talking. No, no, that's good because I've got to come on... I'm coming on to Durham Sewa. has got a podcast as well. Oh, I've got a dangerous song, man. That's going to come out soon. I want to release go it on here. Go and sing it. Okay, let's sing it. <coughs> right. But the thing is, how long have I got? Because every song has a message in it. So a, a, Postman needs time, bro. The post <coughs> go for it. I'll, um, I'll do a bridged version. All right, so we've just done the video for this. I want to big up director Wiz, amazing video director, and um, all our team. And we've done this just recently. And the song is so again, it says, Galta Sari Pyar Di Jindri. Oh, then you're gonna say, Galta when I say it, and then you're gonna say, Jindri. No, because no, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna try it. Galta, yeah. There you go. Then Jindiri. Jindiri. Yeah, okay, nobody. No, I'll let you go. Brendan, you can do okay, the backing box. Come on, tell me how much you beat today. Let's see. Let's see. I haven't played it. Let's put now. Let's put pressure on now. I'm going to break this. Look, it's Red FM as well. No, no, hang on. No, no, no. I was really close to doing it. No, no, no. You got it. No, no. It's hard to sing that anyway. No, you can't. Go on. Give me a clap. Has anyone ever done this with him? Galta Sari Pyar Di E Jindri O Din Chaar Di E Galta Sari Pyar Di E Ho Galta Sari Pyar Di E Jindri O Din Chaar Di E Galta Sari Pyar Di E Ho Yeah, it's all about love, yeah? Only four days to live, yeah? Galta Sari Pyar Di E Jindri then a char dia, yeah? Then, now I'm going to explain something I don't like in the song. Carry on, carry on, carry on. Okay. You're making me doing hot emojis. No, I'll do now, I like that. Uh, okay, uh, what's it? Okay. style. There we go. Carry on clapping. Then it goes, listen to the anthem now, yeah? Bande di bande naal taiyo ne yo baan di Panch chora di gal andro hai chal di Jind ne maani ne yo sikhi aanu man di Taiyo ta dujhe ya di mehna to te sar di Lalach jad yo jad di ya ego Banda maar diya, aakhir dunia haar diya ho Galta saari pyaar diye, jindri o din chaar diye Galta saari pyaar diye ho
So, you want to say the second one as well? Yeah, you might as well. So, I don't know, like, I'll be here. Can I just explain what it means? So, what I'm saying is, can't be the man that I deserve, really. I've been knackered after that. Stressful as well, that one. Oh, I'm not that good a singer, but anyway. No, it's just me clapping. It's, it's but listen, you're saying, Bandedi, Bandedi, Nala, Daya, Naya, Bandedi. What I'm saying, so you call me man does, as well. So, you call me big up, man. Thank what I'm saying is, much. man doesn't get on with man, Bandedi, Bandedi, Nala, Daya, Naya, Bandedi, Panji, Chorandi, Gal, Andro, and Chaldi. Remember what I said here? Calm, throat, low, mohan, car. When they operate, tiny bandedi bandedi nani bandedi. Ego. Oh, he done this to me. He's worse than me. He's, I'm better than him. I, my, 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 yeah? So that's what we're talking about there. Panji Chorandi ka randra chandi. Jind ni mani nahi ho sikhya nu mandi. This, this jind, this ego, jindhi sikhya guru no ja likhya. Remember, stay in sat santok daya ke mani marta, yeah? Stay in the virtues. What the guru saying, jind ni mani nahi ho sikhya nu mandi. That's why they feel um, envy and jealousy towards someone else being successful. Because they are praying in the five deeps. You understand where I'm coming from? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then it's Lalacha Lalach greed Jadu Jardia rips you out of your roots when you want what others want and you're into all this sort of stuff, yeah? And you're watching Instagram, and you're seeing all these things being fed into you. That's why I was off there for five years, yeah? Because Lalach Jadu Jardia ego. Banda maar diya, aakhir dunya haar diya ho. Basically, the ego is going to kill you. In the end, you're all just going to die. Yeah, we're all just going to be dead and we'll be gone from here and you all lose. If you don't get this game right. That's what the Guru is basically telling us in Gurbani. At the end, you've wasted this life. If you're just operating in your panchor. So, that's the first antra. But you see how there's a message in it. But do jabi antra ya. Wo bhi on me gaana finish kar ke jaana. Okay. This is air time. This okay. is air time, right? Me, so me, there it goes. Give him a clapping, man. <coughs> now I'm going to explain. <clears throat> now I'm going to explain why you don't mess with me, as in a Khalsa, you don't mess with a sink. Now I'm going to explain that because I've talked about love in the first tantra. I don't want people to start thinking we're all just love, 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 tree hugging love, yeah? <laughs> we're not that, right? And there's many people who go down this route and they go a bit too hippified, you know, because the love thing is very overpowering. Mm. At the same time, this is where Panjami Pasha, when they gave their Shahidi, where things changed. So, first one, Galta Sari Piyardiya Jindri Palchardiya, we've done the first antra where it's explaining your inner self. Now, the second antra explains, I'm in the state of a sant, right? Right now. I'm in love, love, love. Why would I want to now become a Sapahi? Menon ki Lorea, look, I'm in love with the world. Why do I now need to become a warrior and pick up Shastra and pick up weaponry? Why? So this antra explains that. So in this it says, Santo sapahi da sike o banda baduga, ni me bande to pala ke o koi daruga, hik taan ke sardar hi khaduga, mon waliya o has has ke maruga pehla, nak de var deya. You never hit first, yeah? Ros jage, you touch me, bande khalar deya, very, nu andro paad deya, oh, oh, oh. Galta, sari piyar is always about love. We don't want to fight with no one, but you come and mess with us, then we finish you off. Siddhi gal. So I just want to explain it. Santo sabahi das kyo banda banuga. The first bit from the state of a sant. Why would I want to become a sabahi? Yeah, and the reason is nima bande to pala kyo koi daruga from a nima banda who's humble. What to koi daruga? But you will never be scared of a nima banda who's just love, love, love. If you become Nima to people, right? And this is where Shemi Pasha picked up the Shasta and said, Nah, mate, we ain't them people who you can just walk over, right? Started with the mark. Because Guru Arjan Dev Ji, we were all about love. We never wanted to hurt anyone. But then the world doesn't leave people like us alone, is what the Gurus are depicting here, right? So, Nime Bande Topala ke Oko Daruga. Then it's saying, Hik Tan ke Sardar hi Khoduga. Yeah, then I'm saying, right, I'll tell you what, you can't touch me when I'm standing like this, yeah? I'll die, happily die. You happily die in this state, yeah? Then it's, but even then, we're never going to hit anyone first. We're never going to go out and bully someone. We're never going to go and start, you know, make the initiate uh, the argument. But then, if you pierce through, and if you become a, you know, of real and you come through into a day, let us jump here. Fair bandi kala, a day I'm very new under the par day. Par galta sari pyar diya, jindri pal char diya. We don't want to fight with anyone. And then I do a speech at the end of the song where 
I'm basically saying do not mess with any Babbar Sher Sardar or a lioness core. Yeah. In this, I don't just mean people who have got beards. I'm talking about any Sikh who identifies himself as a Sikh. Yeah. You've got hair, haven't you? It just because it's not long, you're still a Sikh. You still cut. You still are a Babbar Sher Andro Bandeya. Baroni Bandeya. Just from this. And what I'm saying, if you're a Sikh out there and anyone messes with you, you need that martial warrior side in you. And the postman, postman Pat, is going to put this in the music and deliver it. That's what I'm saying. Tiga? Wow. Yeah, you man. can't, you can't be, you can't be that. <laughs> it's, it's, it's genuine where it's coming from, it's real. I'm not making this up and um, let it come out, let it flow. It's not even about confidence, it's not me, I don't feel it's me that's talking when I start speaking like this, but Bucky, um, yeah, that's it really, yeah, they got nothing else to say. Cogs, thank you very much. Thank you, man. I really appreciate well, it. Well, we'll finish it off yes. um, in a, in a, a we'll multiple back. episodes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you, everyone, um, for tuning in. And uh, make sure you like, subscribe, and follow Dharam Seva, Kaka Monvalia, Insta, Sikh Army, uh, Sunny Sing Media. Every, big thank you to uh, Everest Studios who've um, helped and powered this episode. And I really appreciate it. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Let's go, 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 let's go